type of oh, way. And the shoot. reason why I'm saying the problem why we she got Papa feels- Lot in here, y'all. Huh? What happened? We got Papa Lot in here. Okay, go oh, Papa Lot. Pop yes. Hey. Mommy, Yo, up, what up, my Thank nigga Ma? What up, what up? I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Maserati, Rick, and Detroit. Convertible bird in Miami. Graduated summa cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcone with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis from Close Range. Did you know Monster Cody? Yeah, I, I never, I, ne- I was never been in the same space with Monster. Monster was like the folklore to us. We, I'm three years younger than Cody. You know what I mean? And so we was, we was always looking to the right name being, off of Monster. He's always right being proven. We both was in prison to write each other. Yeah, I seen that somewhere. He's right, Tupac. And Cody was, Cody was the enigma, man. He, if if he could have stayed, stayed yeah. straight, he'd have been, he'd have been a, a mark. I look up to him. I got a lot of respect for him. You know, some people just can't live out here. Yeah. This yeah, world's yeah. a trip for some people's minds. Yeah. It's that challenge. You know, what he's talking about is we got homies who, who who can navigate while they're in prison, incarcerated, because that that You ever seen his penmanship? Yeah, I seen some is right. Ooh. Yeah, I seen him is right. Oh, I mean, he was right. Good. Very intellectually stout, but when he came here, the discipline of not dealing with, you know, follow to that. That, that that crave, mm-hmm. he couldn't handle that. He couldn't master that. But he was a great adversary because he was yeah. an adversary with us. So you know, he was a, he was a gangster. We was the sixties, mm-hmm. and he was a legend. To be from the wrong block, or even to wear the wrong color clothing, can make you a stranger, and therefore an enemy. When you can control hate and turn it on and off like a faucet, when and where you want to and regulate it to how much you want to use or how less you want to use, that's a beautiful thing. That's control, that's discipline. Hey, hey, man, what's up, nigga? To the police and to the public, gang members are criminals, but they see themselves differently. I'm in the Army. I'm from the Crips. We're Army, and people fail to realize that we are an Army. We are an Army an armed unit of soldiers, young, vibrant, a lot intelligence. Well, we're, there's, there's, no, it's, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm sure not in anyone else's mind who was involved in this thing, that we're soldiers, that we are belong to, to me, army. at that time, the purest manifestation of power was to be in a car, a stolen car, with four weapons, with four people, and high narcotics. And to be rolling through an enemy's neighborhood, the surge of power that you get because you have life and death in your hand because you're carrying weapons and they're not. Or even if they are, you get to jump on them. The satisfaction you get is knowing that you're in control. And at that age, it's very easy to feel powerless because a lot of us are powerless. So we join gangs, as I did, for the power to be able to say, this is my crew, this is my posse, these are my homeboys. Not and let's no go do this. Like old bitch ass Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Something you need to remember. O'Shea is cool, right? I mean, O'Shea in the strength that the brother's an entertainer. Other than that, he ain't no gangster. He never shot nobody. He ain't from 111. He ain't from the neighborhood. Grew up on, what, 108th and Van Wick, something like that. Van S. Van Wick, some shit. He ain't no gangster. But the way he parlays, he tends to make people believe he's the real G. And to be a G means to be able to put work in and be in the street and be, in, be respected. Well, you can come on 108th and Western without WC. That's some real motherfuckers. It means being able to, you know, white motherfuckers like JD and send some chips. Get a lawyer for a motherfucker. Real G shit. Oh, he's the entertainer. 
I ain't got no part. He got some dope lyrics, but he ain't living that shit. And motherfuckers tend to think that he is. I be getting letters. My first thing told what's up with Ice Cube, your OG homie? And that ain't true. Ice Cube is not a crip. He's not a blood. He's not really a thug. He's an entertainer. And that's the real, that's the dope. And you gotta get that bullshit out your head. Because what he's talking about, he ain't living. And what I lived is what I'm talking about. To my bullet holes, scars. To my 19, 20 years in prison. YA, camp, juvenile hall, San Quentin, Folsom, Solidad, Cortland, Pelican Bay, Chino, the whole. Ice Cube ain't never been nowhere. He ain't never did no time. He never had to face no motherfucking Mexicans. Except on the mic. And that's real. Don't be following no bullshit. Because bullshit will get you killed. Real shit will get you killed. But bullshit will get you killed for sure. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob, mob, mob. We on our way to the west side with it. The great state of California. South Central to be exact. Yeah, this shit still like the movie. Y'all play if y'all want to. Now, over the years of doing mob ties, I got the opportunity to talk to what I would call a lot of stand-up dudes like Del Son, Convertible Burt, Bimmy, Nino Breeze, Duke Shine, and a few more. And what I took from a lot of those conversations was Mob Ties was almost like an encyclopedia for gangsters. So that set me on a quest to cover and uncover gangsters that we all know about and some we might have never heard of. But we literally can't have a channel called Mob Ties without covering certain people. And the person that we're covering today in my eyes is going to be one of those people and one of the first gangsters that I've probably came across in my lifetime. And the person that I'm talking about today is going to be a guy by the name of Cody DeJohn Scott or Sanika Shakur. But most people know him or the world knows him by the moniker Monster or Monster Cody. Now, me being from Brooklyn, New York, my first thoughts of L.A. gangbanging early on was cities filled with dudes with red and blue on different colors. And I was kind of misguided. And one of the first people or the most polarizing gangsters at that time was Sanyika Shakur or Monster Cody. And in 1993, he wrote a polarizing memoir called Monster, the autobiography of an L.A. gang member. And it was almost a gruesome tell-all book of how a kid from South Central can graduate from the sixth grade and graduate into a gang on the same day. Now, Monster Cody was kind of brought up in a big family. He was the fifth of six children, and his parents had moved to Los Angeles from Houston. Now, it was widespread rumors that Monster Cody was actually the son of L.A. Rams running back Dick Bass, and it was rumors that his mom might have been pregnant during that affair that she had with Dick Bass. And Monster Cody talks about a lot of abuse in his household early on. And a lot of people are going to attribute that to that affair, saying that his father, Ernest Scott, was bitter. It was rumored that Monster Cody was physically and emotionally abused by Ernest Scott. And it was said that he would even show favoritism to the other kids, thinking that Monster Cody wasn't his. Like I said earlier, Monster Cody was exposed to gangs at a very early age and would graduate into the gang in the sixth grade. But it started on even earlier than that. Now, in Tukey Williams' memoir, Blue Rage, Black Redemption, he would recall occasions in which he and other adult members of the Crips would smoke PCP and lift weights at Tukey Williams' house. 
Now, according to Tukey Williams, Monster Cody was always present at the house and would watch the gang in awe as they would lift weights and tell tales about shootings, fights, and all type of gang warfare. Now, in that memoir, Tukey Williams would go on to express regret on the influence that he had on Monster Cody, and he would hold himself personally responsible for exposing Monster Cody to drugs because later on in his life, Monster Cody would go on to deal with an addiction to PCP as well. Now, based on reports, they're going to say a member of the West Side Crips by the name of Sidewinder formed the 8 Trey Gangster Crips, or 83GC, ETG, ETGC, back in 1975, leading Monster to join the gang not too much later. Now, it would be a few years later, in 1977, when Monster was 13, where it was rumored that he got his name when him and a fellow member of the Crips was trying to rob an older gentleman who had attacked Monster in the process, but eventually was overpowered by the two young men, leading Monster to attack the man for 20 minutes, leaving him in a coma, allegedly leading police to say whoever committed that act of violence was a monster. And that would just be the start of his gang banging career. He would be a prime factor and the well-known rivalry between the eight trays and another popular faction of the Crips, the Rolling Sixties. And that would come back to haunt him on New Year's Eve of 1980, when he was 16 years old, because he was ambushed and shot by three adult members of the Rolling Sixties after being set up by a group of girls that was dating friends from his set. Now, that wouldn't stop him as he would almost rise to street stardom after being released after several weeks. By the 1990s, his popularity would grow to an all-time high, and he would go on to meet Tupac Shakur. They would form a close friendship, and Tupac was even mentioned in the introduction of his book. Now, in 1996, as Monster Cody was on the run from the police for one of his many parole violations, he met up with Tupac on a set of his X-rated version of Tupac's video for How Do You Want It? And that would be the last time the two would be able to get together before Tupac was initially killed. And that would almost start the downfall of Monster in a sense, because in March 2007, already wanted by authorities for parole violations, he was then placed on the city's most wanted gang members list and would eventually be arrested by the LAPD for allegedly breaking into a home of his acquaintance and beating him in order to steal his cars. Now, those charges represented a possible third strike, and they could have sent Monster Cody to jail for life. On May of 2008, he would go on to plead no contest to carjacking and robbery charges, and he was sentenced to six years in state prison. He would be released from Pelican Bay after serving two-thirds of his six-year sentence in August of 2012. But his troubles would continue because on July 10th, 2017, he was sent back to prison for an assault conviction out of San Diego County, for which he would later serve time and then be released on parole. But then on June 6, 2021, Monster Cody was found deceased in a tent in a homeless encampment in Oceanside, California. So for a guy that started off his life gangbanging as early as age 13 and to die in a homeless encampment is bizarre to me and just shows you the roller coaster ride that life can take you on. Now, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all make sure y'all hit the subscribe right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And y'all get in the comment box below. Let me know what cities we haven't been to, what gangsters we missed, what we got wrong, what we need to cover next. And y'all tapping with me however y'all see fit. Y'all tweet me, text me, call me, CC me, email me, mention me, tag me, stop me in the street. However y'all want to do it. It's your boy Popola. I'm here for all of it. Mob, mob, mob.